afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me. My name is uh, Dr. Kira Branock, and I am the course director of the MA History of Family. And I'd like to welcome you all this afternoon uh, to our webinar. So I'm delighted to be joined this afternoon um, by my colleague, uh, Dr. Rachel Murphy, whom you will see on the screen, um, and uh, by uh, some of my, of my former students, um, Barbara Watts, who is in Canada at the moment, uh, Stuart Clancy, who's in Limerick, and Ian Walsh, who is in Waterford, all here in Ireland. Um, um, I should also add as well that uh, um, the students that are um, uh, on the seminar this afternoon are also PhD students in the department. So um, I, I've gone through number one there, which is the welcome and the introduction, um, and I'm going to move on uh, to talk uh, in a moment about the University of Limerick itself. And again, um, uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to be a student here at the University of Limerick. And then my colleague, Dr. Murphy, is going to talk about the course itself. Then um, Dr. Murphy will hand back to me and I'll talk you through the various different, um, uh, the process of applying to the university. And then after that, we'll pass you over to uh, our uh, wonderful students, uh, Barbara, Stuart and Ian, and um, they will talk about um, what it was like for them to study the MA History of Family uh, online and on campus and in a blended capacity here at the University of Limerick. But anyway, that's what we all look like. And um, we are a friendly lot. So yeah, this is a um, this is the team. This myself and uh, Rachel, Ian, Barbara, Stuart, and our wonderful um, convener this afternoon, um, Una Grace, um, who is one of our administrators here in the department and has some great has done some great work for us in identifying you all today. So if you could move on to the next slide, uh, Rachel. Um, so the University of Limerick uh, is a, a young enough university by um, Irish standards. It was established in 1972 and um, it is uh, located in the Midwest um, on the banks of the Shannon. It's, a, I, I think, uh, one of Ireland's, um, without question, it's, it's Ireland's most beautiful campus. Um, the mighty river Shannon runs through it and um, you're looking there at a picture of what's known as the Living Bridge. Um, which is a, a, an architectural um, and engineering feat in its own right, but it links um, the old and the new campus uh, to one another. Um, the University of Limerick currently has uh, 16,500 students and approximately um, 1,700 staff. And it is a pioneer in many respects with regards to online and blended education. And uh, we're very much focused on accessibility and ensuring that um, people from underrepresented backgrounds uh, in Ireland have an, and, and worldwide have an opportunity to study with us. The MA History of Family has two criteria. Um, so for some of you, you may or may not have an undergraduate degree in um, history, and I, I invite you to send me an email um, to discuss uh, the possibility of actually coming on the course. We have a second criteria for people who come from the University of Life. And of course, you're very welcome to study with us. And uh, we take a professional experience into consideration as well. So people who are, say, for example, professional genealogists, librarians, people coming from other disciplines, we're very interested in talking to you if you want to study with us. So if you want to move on there, um, Rachel. Um, so the Department of History is um, it's a small enough department, but we're a busy one. And we have four MA programmes. We have an MA History, MA History of Family, MA Local History, and the MA in Public History and Cultural Heritage. Our department has expertise in Irish, European, uh, British, um, colonial history, in um, the history of the Middle East. Um, we have um, research strengths primarily though in Irish history, and that would be uh, my own research domain. Um, and of course, uh, that of uh, everybody here uh, with you today, uh, Dr. Murphy and uh, uh, Barbara, uh, Stuart and Ian. So if you would like, yeah, thank, sorry, Rachel, if you want to move on to the next slide. OK, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit more um, about the course now. So um, welcome, everyone. Um, 
And the course itself started running in 2005 and Doc Dr. Brannock was instrumental. She set that up and um, it really is the first um, class of its kind. And obviously we have a good track record of, of running this um, since that point in time. Uh, there's been many students who have um, gone through this course. Um, and one of the things that I think students really appreciate about it is its flexibility. Um, so you can study um, on campus in blended format, um, as, uh, as Kira just said there, which means you're doing some online learning and some on campus as well, um, or you can be completely online. And uh, ever since uh, the start of the course, we've had students from all over the world um, who have been in the classes um, and you can also um, take the uh, course either full time which takes one year or part time uh, meaning over two years. Um, one thing I would say that um, is we're very flexible about this so even if you happen to be an online student, we had a student last year from Australia who um, wanted to come over to Ireland for two months. So she was online for most of the time, but then she joined us in the classroom uh, for the two months that she was over. And, and we love the fact that it is, uh, it, 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 we adapt to the students in that way. Um, so who are the students? Well, I've mentioned they come from a, a wide range of locations um, listed. There are just some of the countries. Um, Barbara, who will be speaking to you later on, is from Canada herself. Uh, this year I've got students from England, France, Germany, Australia, as well as Ireland. There's obviously um, a lot of people from Ireland who do the course too. Uh, the USA, Wales, um, so a wide range of different countries. It tends to be ones uh, where people maybe have family history, um, Irish family history themselves, but not exclusively. Um, and then um, Kira's already touched on this, but in terms of the backgrounds that people come from, um, obviously the people who have an interest in history or genealogy as well, local history, but we have people that have degrees in a wide range of subjects. So uh, this year there's someone um, with a degree in medicine, there's others from social sciences. Um, and what we really value is that there's people from a lot of different backgrounds who are able to share their experiences with each other. So it's a really um, enriched environment, I think, in which to study. Um, and we really do value the different um, life ranges of life experience. So we will have um, people who have come straight from their history degree maybe, people that are working full time, people that are carers who wouldn't be able to come to college unless they could study online and also retirees as well. So um, it's, it's a lovely range of students that are taking the course. So I wanted to give you a, an outline of what is involved um, on a practical level. So um, uh, you have the, the two semesters in semester one, which uh, starts in uh, September. Um, there are four main modules that you would be studying. Uh, the first one, HI6041, Introduction to the History of Family, is where we um, teach the theory um, behind it and, uh, and how to apply that to your own research. Um, and what we find is people uh, really enjoy this academic grounding in terms of understanding different approaches to, to conducting your family history research. I know some of you are, are, are genealogists and it's really complementary to the, to the kind of work that you might be doing. Um, so we look at different theories. So we will look at things like there's a demographics approach where we're looking at statistics and numbers and um, looking at populations, household structures and so on. We look at the sentiments approach, which is um, looking at things like letters and diaries and trying to understand why people acted the way that they did, um, their emotions, their values and so on. Um, and then there's also the household economics approach where we look at families and why they made the decisions they made. You know, so some people in a family might migrate, some might stay um, and work on the family farm, um, some might move to the an urban environment and so on. Um, HI6061 um, is looking at families and communities. So there we take a, a broader perspective and we're looking at things like um, class and gender and then different um, organizations that would have um, touched on family lives. So things like um, education, religion, politics um, and, and so on. So again, um, and, and what I'd say here as well is there's a, a lot of flexibility in terms of the readings that we do and uh, the assignments that you do. So if you have a particular interest, it's something that uh, there'll be something there for, for everyone, I would say. And then Irish cultural history. So this is looking more at the cultural side of things. Um, and um, again, students find that very interesting looking at, um, at things from that angle too. Um, and then all, all the while, while you're doing this, we're also um, teaching you in terms of how to um, write in a very academic way um, and an approachable way as well. 
Um, so, so we're giving you the technical skills um, that you need as well as the subject matter and thematic skills. And then by the time you come to semester two, um, you will be expected to have already um, decided your dissertation topic and we give you a lot of help. There's a lot of discussions um, in semester one around what topic you might be interested in, in looking at. Some people arrive with a topic very clearly in mind on day one. Other people, uh, you know, are, are still thinking about it and so we'll have those discussions in class. And so by the time you get to semester two, we start helping you to think about how to research and write um, your dissertation. And then the other modules, so the, the top three things that you see there are all related to your dissertation. And then um, at the bottom there, HI6062, People on the Move Studying Migration is another module that we will do looking at migration in particular um, from the Irish perspective. But this year I've had students looking at other um, angles as well. Um, and we're looking at internal migration within Ireland, um, people um, immigrating um, to Ireland, and then also um, looking at different areas of the diaspora and uh, the impact of um, Irish emigrants to other countries such as um, Australia, Canada, USA and so on. And so all the while you're, you're doing um, working on the dissertation and then um, after you finish the, those two semesters, the focus is purely on the dissertation, which is 20,000 words. If you're a full time student, um, you will complete the dissertation um, um, by early August. If you're a part time student, uh, then you have the rest of the next year to focus on the dissertation. So you do the modules in year one and then you do the dissertation uh, in year two. Um, so all students um, have access to a virtual learning environment um, and uh, in the current climate I think that's really important because um, it means that everyone can study online and then you know as and when we're able to people can then come back to the classroom um, but there is that flexibility there depending on what happens. Um, so everyone has access to this on the right you can see that's just an example of one of the pages when we were looking at migration to Australia um, we do regular what, what we call e-tivities so they're um, little um, learning activities little assignments that you do to consolidate what we've learnt um, each week there are forums so you can discuss what we've been doing in class um, together there and we also have video conferencing software so um, it's a way of actually having uh, live classes uh, together so the note there is that um, all students are likely to be online in semester one, but obviously um, it, we're, we're watching to see what happens there. Um, just a few things just to tell you in terms of the supports that we have. Um, the Glucksman Library um, is we actually I saw today on Twitter it, it won another award. Um, we, it was um, it's uh, very recently been completed and it's um, sort of world class in terms of um, the uh, the setup in the new part of the library. Um, this thing on the right here is a crane and th those drawers each contain books and this is a, a I don't know the details, but it's a fantastic book storage and retrieval system. But it's very cutting edge um, and in the new library there are wonderful learning spaces. It's built in an accessible way. Um, so all of that is great for the students that will be coming um, on campus. Students who are online, um, again, you have access to everything that you need to do this course. So we have a, a great collection of ebooks. The library worked very hard to get those for us. You have access to articles to various different databases. So like Ancestry, um, the British Parliamentary Papers, uh, Irish Newspaper Archive, just to name a few of them. So you're very well supported as online students. And then um, again, we're very lucky to have a fantastic special collections and archives here at Limerick. It was established in 1998 um, and uh, it, it focuses, I suppose, on Limerick and Munster, but then Ireland as well. Um, so you can see on the slide here there, there are 2000 archive boxes and 40,000 printed works and they're um, bringing in new material all the time. And what's again fantastic if you are an online student is um, the library is very um, good at digitizing sources. This diary here that you can see Henry William Massey, they digitized that and uh, we had a transcription workshop for students and one of my students at the moment who's based in France is working on this diary um, right now for his dissertation. Um, the emphasis is as, as well as learning the theory and learning the writing and so on um, and the different themes. Um, there's also an emphasis on practical experience and uh, in this picture here you can see uh, my two colleagues on the call here. It's Stuart and Ian and this was a crowdsourced project. Um, um, Kira um, uh, won um, a huge uh, 
had a great funding opportunity from the Irish Research Council for a project, um, Death and Burial Data Ireland, 1864 to 1922. Um, and she is the principal investigator for this project and, uh, and um, has a, a team working with her on it. And so students were able to see what it was like to be part of an academic project and get involved in some of the um, transcription for that. Um, there's also access on other projects, crowdsource projects that we do, um, and also to um, attend um, academic research seminars. So we like you to get some practical experience as well. And, you know, again, it's possible to do some of these things online too. So the transcription workshops you can do online and um, the crowdsource project was also conducted online. And then field trips. So uh, normally we have one field trip um, per semester. So um, this is actually uh, an image from uh, last year when we went to the Registry of Deeds. Um, we normally go to the National Library and the National Archives and then we have a discussion as a class as to where else the students would like to go. And last year the Registry of Deeds was uh, the, the popular one that they wanted to go to. We've also been to uh, Henrietta Street as well. So just very briefly, um, we often get asked, you know, how much time um, does it take to do the course? And uh, I think what Kira always says is, you know, how long is a piece of string? Um, it really is what you want to make of it. But in terms, I suppose, of the contact time, so these seminars and so on, um, there's maybe nine hours a week, but this includes, um, the, obviously it's all online. So um, the benefit of that is you can dip out in and out of it as and when is convenient to you. Um, and that includes the activities and so on as well. Um, and then on top of that, you know, um, you can do as much reading or writing as you want. It really depends um, how much time you have for, for that. So what I'm going to do now, obviously we're happy to take questions um, at the end, as Kira said, but I'm now going to hand over to Kira, who um, is going to explain what you do next um, if you uh, have found everything interesting so far. Um, so I'll hand over to you, Kira. Thanks very much, Rachel. Um, uh, with regards to, um, we, we, we have an, um, an open window at the moment in terms of application. So the first thing I would say is um, uh, log on to the UL uh, uh, graduate um, uh, website as soon as possible, uh, particularly for those of you who are probably, who have degrees from other countries, because it can take quite a bit of time to process the applications. So you'll see on the links there on the left that there is a link to, the, first of all, the course itself, and then from there it will tell you how to apply. I'm very happy to um, address any queries that you might have. If you want to send me an email, my email address is there on the right. Um, I'm not at that phone number right now because uh, campus is closed down, but um, I'm more than happy to uh, call um, any of you if you're um, based in Ireland or I can Skype or uh, WhatsApp call uh, those of you who are based abroad uh, at a time that is suitable. Um, I'm, I would advise um, with regards to um, the application process um, because at the moment it takes a bit more time to verify um, degrees and um, to get in contact with your universities is taking a little bit longer than normal. We try our best to ensure that there's no delays from a UL perspective, but um, I would I would recommend for those of you who are coming back to education, maybe after 10 or 15 or tw 20 years or longer, um, it might be difficult difficult for you to get your transcripts. So if you are thinking of doing further study, um, per perhaps make a start now and um, in trying to gather up your documentation. Um, so um, the application process itself requires things like um, a, your qualification transcripts, certificates. If, if, you're, if uh, English isn't your first language, you'll need to provide um, uh, a, a, an indication of um, your language qualification and um, all transcript certificates etc. If they're not in English you'll need to have certified English translations um, and also a copy of your birth certificate which is the long document. Um, our colleagues in uh, the graduate office are, are very um, prompt and very good and will guide you if you're in any difficulties um, and of course uh, both myself and Rachel are available to you also if you have any queries. Um, would you like to move on um, there Rachel? Um, so here's uh, some screen grabs of what the application process looks like. Um, so um, on the link in the previous slide, I think three slides ago, um, you, you'll see where you can apply for the full-time or the part-time programme. 
I actually want to come back to the matter of time and how long it takes. I found that over the years and I've been I've been teaching um, uh, on the MA History of Family since uh, 2005 and we have had uh, an array of students with um, full time jobs, caring responsibilities, absolutely marvellous people who've managed to complete the degree in one year. I think that you get the dissertation written in the same amount of time anyway, and I would whether you stretch that out over one or two years is is up to, up to you entirely. Um, but the programme is organised in such a way that you're learning in an in incremental fashion so that we work with you to identify um, through the activities that Rachel mentioned to identify your strengths and weaknesses and help you to, to bolster your reading and writing skills, your close reading and writing skills. And um, and, and also the course content content itself is dictated by the student interest. So there's a, there's a fair bit of flexibility there. And we try and ensure that most students are well equipped by the time um, teaching finishes at the, at the end of semester to, to actually go on and do the write the dissertation um, uh, on their own. So it's it, it's 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 called a scaffolded approach to learning. So we build you up and then we take away the scaffold at the end of semester two and lo and behold, you can stand on your own. Anyway, um, so uh, just to come back to the, the full time or part time program, it, it's actually important to think about this um, because uh, the costs are the same because it's literally like for one year uh, full time um, is literally twice the amount it costs for two years part time. Um, but the university will allow payment plans and it is quite flexible in that regard. Um, you do need to have a credit card or debit card to pay your fees. Um, it also allows, I think, if, if you don't have a credit or debit card, I think that it also allows some IBAN payments. Um, once your application is processed, um, you, you'll hear back from us fairly quickly. Just to understand as well that there is a process that 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 occurs behind the scenes. There's a load of people who actually um, have a part to play, and I'm part of that that uh, mechanism. And uh, it, it usually um, there's about maybe four points where it needs to be checked by um, by people by by me, I think at stage uh, two or three, and then it goes back again to the to the um, graduate school. So um, it isn't just us who has oversight of this of this system, and it can take time. And uh, particularly if um, over the summer period, your home university, your own alma mater, isn't um, as well sca staffed as it might ha might have been um, during semester time, just allow a little bit more time. Um, so, Rachel, if you want to move on to the next slide. Um, yeah, so I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to I'm going to hand over. Um, I think uh, Barbara is standing by there um, or Ian is there. Ian, are you there? First of all, is Ian there? I think Ian might be having some technical issues at the Ian, moment, so Ian maybe is. if we we'll go to Barbara. To, to Barbara, absolutely. Thank you, Barbara. I'll, I'll sign out now. Oh, hello. Um, so uh, Kira has given a lot of information there that um, uh, I was going to actually mention. Um, but um, one of the reasons I decided to do the uh, the program uh, was I had been introduced to a history of family in a different course, and I enjoyed the content so much, especially the migration part of it. And I was able to actually do quite a bit of migration on this course. Um, the course seems to be so well laid out. And once I emailed Kira, I decided it was so well managed and I knew exactly what I would be doing and the time frame I'd be doing it in. Um, but I think uh, what some of you need to know is uh, what happens if you're not in Ireland. Um, I'm Welsh, but I'm in uh, Canada. Uh, so because I was seven hours behind everyone in Ireland, the biggest challenge uh, was that I had to be really organised, even to the point of keeping a time chart so that I knew when podcasts would be coming through, when assignments were due, and when the daylight savings times would differ, which some people don't take into consideration, but there is a few weeks uh, where you are totally different. Um, I would download the podcast to my laptop as soon as they became available. Now, I have to tell you that I'm a retired teacher, so I was able to do uh, this work all day, uh, but I did 
um, download the podcast as soon as they became available, which was six o'clock in the morning for me. Um, so I made sure to keep on top of that, but I could have downloaded them at any time as they were always available. And uh, I think telling a secret now, I actually used to take my laptop back to bed and uh, do some notes until about eight o'clock. And, uh, and that's how I worked, but everybody has a different way of working. Um, I kept in contact with people on the course by email and I am still in contact with one from New York and there was an ability to contact others through the forums. But as there was another Welsh person on the course, Kira would put us together for special assignments and give us articles by Welsh authors. Um, we would send our work back and forth by email. Um, but I was also in phone contact with one student living in Ireland and he helped with a few things that I couldn't do when I was on uh, because I wasn't on campus. Um, I was concerned that I would not be able to fit in the writing of the dissertation because I was doing the course in one year. But because of the way it was structured, I was able to work on the dissertation almost straight away. And uh, as the time went on, we were able to apply each week's knowledge to our work. Um, I did miss the field trips, though, and uh, not being able to answer questions in the class. Uh, there were certain questions people would, uh, Kira would ask, and I would want to answer the questions, but I couldn't do that. Um, but I did get to know people uh, and got to know their voices, and then I got to see them at the convocation. Uh, my dissertation was based on an Irish neighbourhood in Cardiff, Wales, and it connected both my Irish and Welsh background, uh, but I was able to do all the research from Canada. So um, I was able to put uh, all my uh, Canadian information, my Irish, Welsh information, so uh, wherever you are, you can add your uh, whatever interest you have. Uh, to what you're doing. Um, uh, one particular essay I did was on uh, war brides to Canada. So there's great flexibility as far as the, uh, the, those things are concerned. Um, I would definitely recommend the history of family uh, to others. There seems to be a huge growth of local historians and history societies as there's so much to find out about past lives. And uh, this course would give those historians the background they would need, not only to better understand the past, but understand where to find information and how to write about it. And that's me. Wow. Thank you, Barbara. No, that's fantastic. And um, again, if there's any questions at the end, uh, pop them into the chat there and uh, we can answer those. Um, I think we have Stuart next. Hey, so uh, first of all, I was going to say I'm actually a lot friendlier looking than that picture, would I, <laughs> I do believe. Um, so I did the History of the Family um, MA two years ago, so I graduated in 2018. Um, I personally chose to do the MA after I finished my undergraduate degree in UO, which is in History and Sociology. Um, what got me into the um, Inter uh, what interested me originally was I did a class called Irish Medical History and that was my first actual dive into social history. So following on, and that was taught by um, the wonderful Dr. Kira Brehnock, and following that I did my um, undergraduate thesis on the history of lunatic asylums in Ireland. So going into it, I was like, I really like social history and I wanted to look m further into like the asylum system as I like developed a strong interest in that. And I thought the History of the Family course was perfect to do this. Um, also, at the time when I was 23, like graduating my arts degree, I honestly hadn't a clue what I wanted to do in my life. So I was like, ah, I know I like history and I really like UL. So it was great. It also bought me a year of time to figure out what I wanted to um, continue doing. And it totally did. Um, like, and that was history. So I was like, before I did the MA, uh, the word PhD was barely part of my vocabulary. And when I finished the MA, I was 100% sure that was the path that I wanted to take. Um, in regards to what I learned on the course, I found the course was uh, quite varied. 
Um, learned a lot about mainly social history, which is, you know, big interest to myself personally, you know, topics such as family structures and migration. But what I actually found was the main takeaway was the skills you learn throughout the course. Like when I originally started the course and they said, you know, you're going to have to write a 20,000 word thesis on a specific topic. It's absolutely terrifying. But the skills are built up really well through, you know, the activities and uh, it's called the scaffolding structure. And uh, you are a bit worried you might fall off the building when the scaffolding is removed, but no, you're actually fine. Um, and it really does pace out really well. Um, I think the program is like really unique in the fact it's so diversive too. I mean, it's called History of the Family and the title itself sounds somewhat focused, but there's such a degree of flexibility that you can tailor your own research topic to. Um, and as well, you've got the support structures that will help you along with that. Um, which come in the form of you know the lecturers and your classmates too. Um, so I didn't uh, study online, I actually studied in the classroom, but the online presence of the other students was always felt. And it was the first time I'd ever like, you know, done anything in this kind of blended learning environment. And I found it really cool because, you know, you're basically like studying in, you know, what's a multinational classroom. I know you hear a lot of interesting takes and perspectives and presentations uh, specifically I liked on very like unique insights and aspects of history that I never would have you know read about before. For example, I never would have read any single thing about Welsh history before uh, we had two Welsh people in the class. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, another thing I want to mention was um, it actually helps you to develop like your research skills um, with the field trips. The field trips are really good. Like I had never went to an archive for the masters and you know, archives in themselves. I don't know if you guys have been there before. Um, they're actually quite intimidating to go into for the first time. Um, so I found that the trip to Dublin archives like with the class was really good. Um, but just even we had a class on explaining how to use an archive, you know, how to order stuff, how to get the best of the materials you're, you're researching. Um, I thought it was great. So I like ended up spending one day a week at the Limerick City and County Archives um, because I was researching um, ex-servicemen in the Limerick District Lunatic Asylum uh, for my thesis. And it was really good. I actually got really into going to the archives once a week. And, uh, you know, it's fun as well to like present the stuff you're learning to the other people in the class as you go along. So like finish off, I'd say I would like 100% recommend the masters to people like no matter what your own personal end goal is for it, because I know in my class, everyone, you know, the age is completely varied um, in person, like the age is varied from me who's 23 up to, I think, you know, late 60s. So there's, it's a very different background. Everyone wants to get something different out of it. And no matter what, everyone in the class that I've spoken to came out with something positive. Um, and everyone comes out better off with better research skills. And for me, it managed to transition me and set me in the right direction for what I personally want to do a career in. And even my PhD now is focusing on the history of tuberculosis um, in Limerick, which is in a way an extension of the MA. And I'm still using the same research skills that I developed in the MA, like pretty much every single day. Um, but for the next well, foreseeable future, forever, hopefully, if I get the career I want. But uh, yeah, that's me. Thank you, Stuart. So, so hopefully those uh, two um, um, discussions there have given you an idea of what it's like from the student perspective. I mean, again, as Kira said, just really to um, reiterate that um, both of us are very happy um, if you want to come to us with any other questions that you have. Um, you know, I think hopefully, um, you know, as the, you've heard from the students as well, um, I think uh, everyone who does the course finds um, their own particular research interest um, and comes away with something something very different and very unique and uh, to be honest I think everyone who's done the course has seems to have enjoyed it um, and the other thing I would say is that uh, that each year um, the students that have studied together no matter where they are in the world 
Um, there's always, a, you know, groups of them that will keep in touch. Um, I was delighted actually uh, on Twitter the other day. Um, there was a, a student of mine from Ireland who had, who had, um, was, this is about six months ago, he was in Australia and met up with two students that had been in the same group as him. And they sent me a photo of them both all having um, a, a, a cup of uh, tea or something together, you know, and it was just lovely to think that the bond that had started in the class was, was still there. Um, so it is really a very friendly environment um, to study in. I think people have a lot of fun um, and, you know, it's wonderful to come out with this uh, 20,000 word dissertation um, at the end of it. Um, so hopefully um, some of you will uh, decide to join us next year and uh, you'll be very welcome when you do. So um, thank you for attending and uh, hopefully we've been able to answer your questions for you there.